where do we start? I would say we start um, we start with creating a generator program. Um, and we will call it generate Huffman tables.cpp. Mm, I should call it generate standard Huffman tables, but that's a bit too long for my taste. So we will for sure need some standard I.O. And no, I don't use C++ streams. Don't make me talk about that. <laughs> Sometimes, at some point I will, I think. And Uh, sorry, I don't know what I did. Let's set up a Hello World program. And let's add this to our CMake lists as an executable. Uh, we will also need uh, PDF parser CPP. Um, we will not need setlib, so I think we don't need uh, link libraries or link options. We also don't need, I think. Uh, let's see if that is enough to build something. Wow, well, these this test explorer creates a lot of garbage. Actually, I'm not sure if Visual Studio did. Did it regenerate the make files? Generate Hoffman tables. Yeah, it did something. It did something with the generate Hoffman tables. Yeah, this is here. Do we have? Oh, it could not link. It seems link command failed. Unresolved. Oh, okay. So we need the setlib because um, even if you don't use the functions, um, even if you don't use the corresponding functions in PDF parser, of course they pull in the, the setlib, um, pull in the setlib symbols. And linking is is not on a per function, it's not granular per function, it's per object. So we need to add setlib. And now we should have a yes, we have a generate Huffman tables XA executable. And let's see if it is a working console application. Yes. Um, and so now the only thing is we need to 
Not, not the only thing, but the next thing is we need to make this program print some C code that we can use instead of the traditional greeting. So the next thing we need to do is we include our great PDF parser dot h. We will need the namespace jb2 Huffman. And we will need, unfortunately, which is a bit, a bit unclean. because for our error reporting and data stream, these are currently in the PDF parser namespace, which is not, not really clean. They should be in their own namespaces. This we will, we will do later. Um, uh, we need a status and Ah, oh, this is interesting. Let's see. We don't need the data stream. Uh, however, I think for status, let's see if we even have a decent. Okay. Um, we have a decent initializer, but we need to give it a buffer for the error message, which is, which is no problem, that's fine. So let's just give it a kilobyte of error buffer. Should usually be enough and it's also checked so it doesn't overflow if it's not enough. And now we can actually start to try something. Sorry for typing so badly. We can parse a standard Huffman table. Let's say first the B1 is the simplest one. Table. Okay, and now for the first time we will do some actual error handling or at least let's say error reporting. So if this is failed, we will actually exit the pro print the error message. So we will print it to standard out. Uh, actually, I've put S should be enough, but uh, actually let's let's do F print F because we want to give it some context. So let's say error passing standard Hoffman table. And starting with the next line, we will put the error message, which we actually will initialize here just to be on the safe side. We will initialize it to zero. So it has a terminating, it is guaranteed to have a terminating zero. Um, and then we will exit with a non-zero error code and here we will actually exit with a zero error code. So let's just print something that we can see. We will actually also print this to standard error because the standard output, maybe we'll use the standard output for the code, which is the simplest way to do it. Uh, 
Okay, this has again the IntelliSense problems, which I don't understand. Um, Can we build? Am I still alive? Looks like it. Yeah, I'm checking the someone's checking the screen on my phone, but it has a lot of false negatives. So we could not build. Wow, we had lots of syntax errors. Ah, because we are missing. This is the first time we are actually including this header from a different file, and we are noticing that there are some things missing. definitely need standard int we have a file so we also need standard io um, that should be the minimum that we need okay we also need assert because we need use it in some inline functions. This, the thing with the inline functions is really annoying because what the inline, I mean, inline functions obviously make sense, um, but what the inline functions did is that they basically ruined the the clean distinction between header and and um, source file in C and C++. And now it would actually be nicer to have everything in one file and not have this bogus uh, separation into header and the rest, which actually does not work anymore anyway due to, to inline functions. <clears throat> So, so what was the problem? Is there actually an error message? And does it just say failed? <laughs> ah, this is the one. Pass standard Huffman table B1. How is it really called? Okay, just pass Hoffman table B1. <clears throat> I should now select a different startup item to have a faster build here, I think. So I don't need always to build everything. And now it worked, I think. This is always a big problem with, um, one of the biggest problems with working in C++ is that very quickly the, the build gets really slow. That's, it works, that's annoying. So, that, not that it works, but. Um, and now, we, we need to just print out the data structures 
that were constructed by these parse Huffman tables in a format uh, that allows us to, to compile them into, into a file. Um, actually, I wanted to have one because I want to look, look up this data structure. I just put it here for reference. And let's see what we what we need to print. Um, for now we will print this just to standard out. And let's already reserve a file variable so don't have to change too much in the end if we want to print this to a file. So and we will just print out and now this is a point where introspection would be really really nice. So um, and I'm not sure how far the real-time type information in C++ already goes in this respect. I have not used it for many years and I'm not sure I want to use it. But in a language with, with introspection this would be you now really nice because we could take the structure and iterate over its data members. Um, we have the, the meta information. Um, here we cannot really do this so we will just hard-coded. The good thing is if there's uh, something missing or so we should usually get a problem in the compilation but later but it's not guaranteed so that's a bit of a weakness of our current approach. So let's just approximate something that could that could compile. So we have the fast cases lookup table that is a pointer. So we will have before another another array. This is a bit of a long name, but whatever. Um, lines and prefixes the same. A long prefix is actually. And then we have the max prefix length. Uh, this is just yeah, it's just unsigned. Then we have the low and the high, which are signed values. Uh, then we have an unsigned number of table lines. An unsigned index and then we have two then we have two members that are actually I plan to remove because I think it does not actually make a lot of sense to keep them around because they are only needed for the deserialization um, routine itself. Okay, and then we have a boolean.
that is true or false. So, uh, before that, we need the fast lookup table. Um, table dot max prefix length. So this is just how many entries this table has. This shift is no problem because this can be at most eight. No, that's the wrong one. This can be higher than eight, but the lookup index width can be at most eight. So we can assert this here. The assert reminds me about something that we probably uh, we probably want our generator always to be built with the debug always to be built with the debug um, configuration. Mm. I just make a note for myself. Because I don't know how difficult this will be to do in the, in the build system. I mean, one thing um, I want to emphasize here is that you might not say this is all way too much effort uh, for doing this standard Huffman table stuff, which could be also done in other ways. And you would be right if this would be the only reason for code generation in this project. But I'm, I'm sure that this will not remain the only uh, point where we need code generation. And the thing is, if you have set it up once and it's in your build system, uh, then adding further generated code is really really easy so um, it's it's really just a one-time effort to to set things up and it it pays back and pays back more than you can imagine in over the over the length of the full of the full project <clears throat> So we have unsigns and now we have the annoying, <laughs> the very annoying thing that uh, C does not accept a comma after the last element, which is stupid. It's just making everyone's life harder. So the lines table should also be easy to write. The long prefix table is a bit more difficult because we don't know its, its length. So we could either mm, store it lengths or we could rederive the length. So. Let's do another loop here. 
this time over the table lines. We need signed range low, unsigned prefix length, signed range length, unsigned short prefix or offset, which we will actually make hexadecimal. Makes more sense as hexadecimal. And then we may need a comma. So line range low line prevalent line range length line short prefix length and then the annoying comma and we need end of line we need something like this we need something like this at the Beginning. But this will be Huffman lines, dun, 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 lines. So let's do this. We still need to do the long prefixes, but uh, let's just see if this works. So it prints something. How does this look? The lookup table looks fine. It has an unused line here with the range low line. This all looks fine. Except for the indentation that we need to fix. This is another thing that um, people always think that generated code has to be ugly. That, that, that's not true. It can be just as nice and well documented as, as your handwritten code. Often it can be nicer because it's it's more regular. So for example, something I would like to do here is to actually uh, document this code a bit. So uh, put some comments here and say that this is the max prefix length and so on. So this is this one. This makes it also much easier to, uh, to look for problems in a generated code. Uh, these are the ones I want to get rid of, but they are still here. So this will make it a bit nicer. Okay, now about the prefixes. We can actually, I mean, this is now not so nice because we recalculate a number that we, that is calculated somewhere else. Don't need this anymore. So
if the line has a prefix length larger than 16. That's the case where we need a long prefix extension area. And then we add plus seven. So round it up to byte to whole bytes. So it should be at least three bytes because if we have 17, then we have 24 is three. Yeah. Okay. Then we can make lines long prefixes we can actually create the last one of our arrays two n long prefix bytes and this is very Simple, just like that. Uh, we will make this hexadecimal. It's easier to read. We actually should, yeah, maybe we will later clean this up so it does not put only one entry in each line. So long prefixes. Um, and this of course is gone, sorry, this of course is gone. Let's run this thing. Okay, we have some bad formats it seems. Yeah, because I need to do it like this. So here we have no, no long prefixes at all. Actually, I think, hmm, I think that wasn't even necessary to code this because none of the, I think none none of the standard tables will actually have long prefixes. They all have, they all can be decoded by looking at at most 16 bits. I think even at most eight, no, eight maybe, maybe there are some that are a bit longer than that, but, but certainly they do, do not need more than 16 bits. So actually, Actually, we can make this even simpler. So, and then we also don't need this caveat here. Let's just remove this. We don't need that. Remove this and this, and always nice to remove code, especially code that is not really clean. Oh, I forgot to change the name here. So. This is wrong, and we simply put a null pointer here. Yes, actually, I just remember one more thing that we need to do, but we will do this later. Okay, we will deal with the warning, but first let's see how this looks. And the nice thing is it's just all plain old data. Yeah. 
we have con complete control over the status structure. There is nothing like a, a V table to fill out or anything like that. So just look at table and lines. Looks all fine. Um, now the only thing left is to to put this into a namespace. Actually, what we will do is we will refactor this into a function. So may, let's make an anonymous namespace, and then we have a function that uh, will be called uh, print. Uh, print Huffman table data um, uh, we will use our error reporting we will use the table we will have a file and then we will have all of this so annoyingly we will because c plus plus is annoying in this way and c is too that we have to change the dot into the arrow how often have i done that a million times in my life already and Okay, file is fine. Ah, hmm. something that I always like to do. To use a user specified indent. And to just put it at the beginning of every line. It's now, it's now a bit of an effort, but um, Actually, we can do it with a Vim macro. So let's record a Vim macro. That doesn't work like that, sorry. Recording. So let's see. Step down. So we look for an F print F. Then we look for the opening quote and we add the percent S. That's the first thing. And we just repeat this macro and oh, <laughs> that was too much. And we have the percent s everywhere. And next thing is the problem is just that we have some that are uh, that are more than line. But I think it will work. So let's record another macro. Um, we will always search for the f print f. Then we will search. What will we search for? We will go to the comma and to the next comma. And then we will add indent comma. And that's it. Let's see if this works. Yeah, that was right. Aha, there is no comma here. This we have to do later. Oh, that was not right. This is a bit more tricky. This would be too complicated for a stupid macro.
of Hedge for the book. Oh, because I have commas, I should have done this differently somehow. I should have looked for quote comma. That would be that would have been smarter. <laughs> yeah, a bit of a work first time, a bit of work, but the nice thing is we can now very easily, very easily indent everything. How much will we need? Probably two levels. Now of course, to make this clean, we should actually check all these printfs for errors, which also shows that it's 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 not so nice to have so many individual printfs here. We will just make we will make a checked function for this. Or maybe we will be lazy, but we will see. So what what we also will do we will put this in namespace JBIG2. And Huffman. And we probably even want to put we probably even want to put all this stuff into an anonymous namespace inside and only yeah something like that. Okay, sorry, I'm back. Um, so we need to turn this into more of a C file. We need PDF parser. Do we need anything else? Oh, let's just try how this looks like. Mm. 
this will be void. Too many arguments passed. We have the dollar hundred percent s here. Yeah, it's of course not two times. Mm. Signed, unsigned, mismatch. This is a U. Oh, because this is U in thirty two. Actually, currently I limit this to be no larger than sixty four K. To be clean here, we should do it like this. And actually, table lines can never be zero, I think, except for except for a text region symbol table. So never for a standard table. So for the standard tables, we can always assert this is positive. So we no longer should return a value because we are void. Void. So this looks almost like C++ code written by someone who actually likes C more than C++. <clears throat> so A little bit of documentation here for some reason for my closing namespaces I like to I like to see what they are closing because I had some confusion. So now one thing that I want to note for myself is error check and of course That's something we should do. <clears throat> okay, the next thing is the one I'm least looking forward to that is um, that is integrating this into the build system. But there I have found a hopefully helpful Stack Overflow answer that is exactly for what we need. So CMake generated code because I'm not really familiar with CMake. I'm using it for the first time. And here's some nice guy actually explains how it is done. So we add a custom command. I wonder if this is case sensitive because I don't really like the uppercase. Um, the output and let's try to put it in a directory for now. Generate it and standard half man tables dot cpp uh, the command is and that will now be interesting because we build our own uh, 
out build debug should be something like this but this is a problem because now we have hard coded here that we we want the debug configuration um, this will need to become this will need to become smarter so it depends on the generator itself which should become a variable probably on the generator itself and on the input for generation and that is the, the pdf parser that is all the dependencies of this actually so we should somehow i don't know how to do this in cmake probably there is a way to to query all the dependencies of this Ah, but they are actually actually no actually they are included here automatically because they are we have transitive dependencies because whenever they change the generator will change so we only have the generator because we don't pass it any extra input files generating source code for standard Hoffman tables And the command actually will need a redirection currently to the output file. This should, mm, yeah, this should also be a variable probably. Let's set a variable. Um, set. <laughs> the output is this file um, we redirect here to this file My chat window is huge even though nobody is chatting. It's so sad that nobody is chatting. The generator will also become a variable. So no extra spaces here. And then we will actually need we will include this file in our builds for um, where do we need this first? First we need it here for the for the JBIG2 test. Let's see if something works at all. Okay, so something did not, the variable didn't work. Do we have a typo in the variable? Yeah. This generated standard. 
<clears throat> this is what you get from using auto completion. Ah, okay. The CMake actually changes changes to the build directory. And then we should say here that this depends on the on the abstract executable. Okay, we get an okay from the generator. That is nice. Did we get some source files? Um, maybe because the directory does not exist or it did ah it does exist because I think CMake generates the directories for us and it looks like code ah we need yeah we need the, the standard no oh, the standard in should be already included by PDF parser cannot open include file pdf parcel dot h ah because we are in the build directory and we do not have the in the include search path we do not have the our source directory so now we should either know whether cmake has a variable pointing to the source directory or which would be the easiest workaround currently to to say here that this is three levels up or is it so get out i think it's three, three levels up mm, that's not so nice but Let's see if we get it to work. Was I wrong? Is it not? Which directory is this executed? Uh, this must be must be also in the build directory. Yeah, and it's using it is using the three levels for the other stuff. So this is actually fine, but I cannot open an include file. Would be really helpful to see in which directory we are here, but it has to be the build directory, so this one. One, two, three up should be fine. Uh, 
Yeah, also Visual Studio finds it. Hmm. What is going on? One, two, three. Is this maybe changing to the source directory and has one extra level? This we could try. Yeah, that's what's going on. Okay. Yeah, this is really relative to the source file. relative to the source file but anyway I'm not so happy about that we should actually have the correct source directory in the include path so let me make a note about this put source so top source directory in include path in the generated code but we have now this code in well let's see let's see if we can actually build test jb2 yeah we can build it Oh, we don't know because I started the wrong file. We can build it and run it. We have some problem, but this is for sure something else, I think. Yeah, the prefix with this is something I changed off screen and I didn't run the test. So standard table in uh, this I change, but yeah, these are now both eight. This is just <clears throat> a note for myself. I need to clean up something here. Okay, we are passed, but this does of course not mean that what we did is working because it's not used yet. There is thinking about what's the best way. Should we put all these all these standard Huffman tables into an array? The question is just if we do that, 
how do we avoid redundantly defining the array indices? Or should we write very simple functions which just which just return the point? No, actually we we could just move this out of the anonymous namespace and use it directly. That's the yeah, that's the that's the simple solution. Sometimes I'm thinking more com in a more complicated way than necessary. So we will just we will actually create the anonymous anonymous namespace inside here so and everything here until this point will be oh no will be one level down ah uh, indent this is fine And then we put this into the public namespace, standard Huffman table. Um, and we should be more fine than before. Yeah, it's now out of the anonymous namespace. It still compiles. <clears throat> there is actually one thing we still need to do and that is the allocated flag because the problem is we have a function that is called free Huffman table which is called the pointer to the Huffman table. Now the problem is we could just say okay it's illegal to call this function for one of the standard tables but that is quite dangerous because if you have the table pointer the code has no way to tell if it's one of the of the Huffman of the standard tables or not so my plan is to actually put put a boolean flag um, inside here and say this is true um, if and arrays have been dynamically allocated. I don't know if this is clear enough, the owned arrays, because it's of course about these ones. Arrays owned by this Huffman table should be So I think I will do this and then when we when we parse the Huffman table then we always set table allocated to true and in the free function We only do the freeing if this is an allocated table. So that, that's what I have in mind. And the, the generator simply creates this with a false flag for allocated.
That's the idea. So now we can check if CMake works cor correctly. If we now start the test JBIG2, we should see a regeneration of our code. Yep, it's done. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we have working code generation in place. Now let's do the same thing for all the Huffman tables. We will create a list here. Actually, first let's make a type tab. Type tab. Um, pointer to a function. Um, parse standard Huff, Huffman table function takes a status pointer and a Huffman table pointer and returns nothing. Then we have a struct that has the function and a name. And now we have all the definitions. For example, we have parse Huffman table B1 returns table B1. Or, or not returns, but initializes table B1. And now we have the same for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Um, actually, let's do that with a win macro. So let's record a macro. So we duplicate the line. We search for the B. We go there, we add one. We search for the B, we go there, we add one. Almost like Excel, it's amazing. People, don't you love Win? Win is the greatest. <clears throat> so, and here we just run over all of these. I'm starting to type garbage. Size of devs divided by size of dev zero. My old little trick. Um, sorry, this one is going outside. as is this one. So uh, here we will actually need to parse, uh, pass, sorry, pass the name. And we will simply replace the B1 by the name.
same here. And with this We have a problem because I made a mistake. Name undeclared identifier. Because it's really devs i dot name, and of course the function here is devs i dot fn. All those warnings. What is so dangerous that we need to be warned so much? Okay. This is the old problem of the you of the <coughs> most negative the most negative number <laughs> because the C standard was the C++ standard they were so dumb to not include the minus in the integer literal and so this is the integer literal is actually too large for 32-bit sign so it becomes unsigned and then you have the warning that you apply it this is so stupid that's really that was just a mistake when they wrote the C standard um, so we have the problem here for the range low um, we could just Could we always do a minus one? And here plus one. Let's see. For sure for the negative, this will work. What is for the positive? If this is the maximum sign 32 bit, then plus one, one becomes unsigned. But it's the correct value. Minus one is still the correct value and we simply need to cast it back. For the case, it becomes unsigned. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> That's such a stupid problem and such a stupid workaround. But it works. It works. I should not say works because that's not how it's said. Um, nice. Do we have the other tables? Yes, they waste too much space and I hate it. So let's change that immediately because I don't like ugly generated code. I hate ugly generated code. <clears throat> so Um, just ah the comma comes from the from the s c 
So let's remove this here. We only print the indent. Nothing else. Else. Um, else. We print a space. And then we don't need the indent, we don't need this one, we still need the comma. And afterwards we print the new line. Is this sufficient to beautify the code beyond your wildest dreams? I think it is nice, much more nice. Yeah, we could align things and so on, but <clears throat> it's maybe going a bit too far. I think it looks quite okay for generated code. And yeah, I shouldn't say that because there's no reason for generated code to look any more ugly than your handwritten one. Um, okay, so next step is to actually use these data structures. And let's do it. Let's first, um, how is it going? Table B6. Let's first try it for this one. Actually, we need to completely change this function because it still has this array which we do not want. So let's get rid of this. The pointers are fine. This one is also fine because the symbol index is always different. This, this is always specific for this text region. Uh, so this is still fine. The index is no longer needed. Okay, hmm. <laughs> there is one little problem we will get because we have kind of a cyclic dependency. Let's work that out later. We will work it out. It shouldn't be now possible that we simply say standard Huffman table B6. No error checking needed, just a break. That's nice. That should be all we need. And here for the user supplied, this is a different story. That should be all we need. B8. Nine. This is not stupid business, but What can you do? 
sometimes it's like this. Thank God for control Y. Control Y is so great. Refinement Verity J. Oh, this is becoming a really ugly long line. I think even with a more reasonable font size, this would be an ugly long line. I think I probably need to take the address in each case. So not needed anymore. And we actually, I think we don't have any, currently at least we have no, no way to fail here. So we will get a warning for the unused label, but let's ignore it for now. <clears throat> So, and now we will run into a problem. Because of course, these identifiers are undeclared. Um, now it's no problem to declare them. That's not a problem. We will just have an extern Huffman table, standard Huffman table, be something. So let's again record a macro, search for the B, increase, go back. That is not the problem. If I, if that's the correct syntax, we should at least get a compile. Well, something is not right here. Yeah, because I forgot the, I forgot the ampersand. So now we should get a compile, I think. Oh no, not yet. We will get a compile, but okay, this is no longer a thing. This is no longer a thing. This array. That's actually fine. We don't need, currently we don't need to free anything else. And also later we should not need to free anything else. 
But we can still do the zeroing, that's no problem. No, that's no problem. This is just zeroing pointers, that's fine. <clears throat> pointers that should no longer be used. The objects are fine. Yeah. Now we are compiling and now of course we get unresolved symbols. Now the problem is actually it's not such a big problem. It's not such a big problem. Uh, we have kind of a circular dependency because we, ne we need these symbols to link PDF parser.cpp, but we need PDF parser.cpp to generate the code which generates the definitions of the symbols and so on. So we must break this circular dependency in some way and one way that immediately comes to mind, I would say, let's see if this works, is to go to the generator and put some bogus some bogus definitions here some stubs or some dummies or whatever we call it Huffman Mm, these ones, we put them here, no longer extern because we want to define them and we simply, uh, let's, let's just fill them with zeros to be a bit safer. They should not be used. Sorry. And this should I mean, this should break our circular dependence. And here we, in, in, here we don't, in the generator, we don't need these tables. That is very strange. Do I have a... I have a non ASCII byte somewhere? Eight D. I'm confused. Where do I have this strange character? Line 24. Uh, was this the space that I removed? Was this, was, was this the... Yeah, <laughs> strange. So this is the warning for the label. Uh, this is another warning that we should we should fix. Implicitly converted to sixty-four bits. No, it was not really intended because this is a very small number. But it doesn't hurt. It does not hurt to do it. It's not needed, but it doesn't hurt. Very nice. And it's even working. So we are already using the standard tables that we have generated to the code and they are just plain. That's so nice. They are just plain old data in the data segment. That's so cool.
ladies and gentlemen generated code code is being used and it's nice um, except for a few things we need to clean up but it is working and now let's i'm a bit suspicious or as if things go too smoothly so let's build a bug into a, our generator let's introduce a bug let us for example mess up the lookup table by generating the wrong code let's just add a plus one here so that we generate the wrong code for the for the tables and then i hope that this test will break Woohoo! it breaks uh, as it should yes we get all the wrong values because the table is messed up the table is wrong now yeah it has the wrong lookup cool so we know that the stuff is actually used that is something that you always should check very nice and now the final cleanup step is that we we have this parse huffman we have this function parse huffman table b1 b2 b3 and so on those are actually no longer needed here except in the generator so we will put them directly directly into the generator actually we will not need the prototypes we can directly put the code from the pdf parser which will get a bit smaller because these ugly functions we can remove this all of this we can remove here nice nice all of this we remove and we put it directly into the generator this should and for users which need the standard tables users which are outside of this cpp file we need to put them these external declarations into the header and everybody can use them it's just important that they of course are constant i don't i don't use constant because constant doesn't help because you know why constant doesn't help if i if i would declare them as const i mean they have arrays hanging off them you could sh still change the arrays so const is really const is really useless i like const expression the new one but but const is useless so let's see if something still works okay generator was executed now we have a problem here because we still call it like this in the test um, this is something this test actually i want to revert back to actually parsing some bytes that we get from the standard but for now for now for now for now we will st simply do a very stupid copy of the standard 
table v1. This is so nice. It's just it's just plain old data. We can just copy it. Should work. This is gone. The, this we can leave. Yeah, it, there will no never be an error from this. And we pass. This is great. Let's rerun all the tests. Uh, maybe some errors because maybe somebody else is using these old functions. Calling to Twitch, somebody is still watching. I cannot believe it. You are amazing. Okay, I think we are coming close to the end of today's stream. I think it was a success. We have some nice code generation in place. We have cleaned up a lot of ugly things we can now reuse these standard tables that will be very cash friendly there is no allocation needed for them there's no parsing needed for them they are just just data we can look actually let's let's take a look at the at the data in the in the listing file so we can enjoy the fruits of our labor Shouldn't there be, there should be a listing file. Ah, maybe I did not add the compiler flex. Compile options, yeah. I, I actually want to add this to all the, all the, um, In general, I, I always want um, to have listing files. Yeah, this is running also the benchmarks, which take a lot of time. Let's see if it is small enough that we can in parallel run something. Okay, so it does build, but it does not run, it seems. Uh, yeah, we just have to wait a bit. Uh, this, this warning will disappear later once we, okay, it ran, fine. Just was cute or something. This warning will disappear later when we add some further code to the function, so I will not make any effort about it. Yeah, the benchmarks take a bit longer, especially in debug, of course, where they are actually useless. So I should not add them to the, to the monolithic test. What I want to see now if we have a, do we have a listing file? Yes. That is what I want to see. Standard Huffman table B1. Is this already the Huffman table? B1 lines, okay.
I think it's here. This is the. This is actually the reference to it. I think. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is actually the Huffman table itself. It has first it has the fast lookup table here. So standard uh, fast lookup table with the name mangling for the anonymous namespace and so on. Um, and there we have the the lines array. And it just defined byte, defined word, defined double word, very nice. Plain old data. Nice. I really like to see these things at this low level to to always reinforce the feeling that I have these things under control. And Actually, this the skills you get when you when you look at stuff this way are very useful in debugging sometimes. If you have some hairy problems, all green people, everything is green. That's nice. So, dear. Dear lurkers, I will conclude this session for today. We have a much better solution now, I think, for the standard tables. Um, I also think it was good that I, I have set up some code generation now because I will definitely need it at one point. So I already know how to do it in CMake and maybe at a later point we will go to the to the more elaborate setup where we have um, the code checked in that is generated and so on. But for now I think I think we are fine. We still have um, some little things to clean up. For example, the generator is now built in the same configuration as the rest of the code with which doesn't really make that much sense. Could all, all, always be a debug build, so it has the assertions and so on. Yeah, thank you, thank you for watching. If you're still with me, especially thank you for uh, staying throughout the stream and I hope there was something in it for you. And with that, see you next time, bye.